Uh, I think the important thing to note about intertextuality though on that point is that it's very hard to come up with an original idea at this point in history. So intertextuality is something that's actually, that term itself has become quite popular in at what's called the postmodern era, right? So after World War II, so 1945 onwards, so this is quite recent in history, that term has become very common, intertextuality, where they basically say, hey, there's not really any more original original ideas that go to the core of our human existence because we've been around for so long. But you can still make something original by taking an older idea and then playing around with it, experimenting with it, right? So a postmodern idea, people start challenging traditional understandings of everything, right? So postmodern, they start kind of playing around with things that we have held to be true for thousands of years. Okay, and they start saying that, hey, maybe this isn't the case or especially with like religion or gender and all of these things, they start questioning all of it. And they say, hey, maybe none of what we thought was true is true and maybe what I think is true is true, right? So there's this kind of challenge against truth from postmodernists and what they do in text and Margaret Atwood's a good example is they actually experiment. They experiment through intertextuality with other ideas to create something new. Okay, so intertextuality is about experimenting and creating something original from a source text. So you have a source text and an adapted text. And the adapted text, I would argue, is equally as original as The Tempest. And you might say, well, how is it equally as original because of the idea? It's like, but all ideas are generated with reference to something that you've already seen, right? To come up with a purely original idea, how do you do that if you don't have any context? People have often read a story or they have been told a story if we're thinking about hundreds of years ago. And then that inspires an idea, a new idea seemingly, that seems original, but actually, which is a byproduct of hearing and reading and listening to all of these other stories. So there really is no original, but you basically make an original by adapting something from the past. So Atwood adapts the source text and there, therefore she invents something new. And I think that's really important that you could easily get a question in the exam and I've seen some questions like this where they talk about originality, okay? They talk about originality and they'll try and put it to you that Atwood's work isn't original. But you have to argue because this is true obviously, it is original. She takes the source text, she takes the Tempest and experiments it, she reframes, reimagines different elements, so much so that she creates an entirely new text. So the originality is derived from that intertextual dialogue. These are the terms you wanna write down now because we're gonna be using them a lot. There is an intertextual, because they're clearly derived from one another, or that allows Margaret Atwood to find originality by experimenting with the play. We're constantly playing and reinventing other ideas because some ideas are so powerful that they should last the course of time.